Hello and welcome to the episode 131 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The end of the Beatles' work for their help feature film, some studio work, and a business trip to New York are among the stories we will cover today. Let's start with the 11th of May 1961 engagement at the Top 10 Club. The Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed another night of their second residence in Hamburg, West Germany. Moving on exactly one year, we find the same lineup of the band still engaged in Hamburg. This time, it was their 1962 Hamburg residency at the Star Club, their third ever, but the first of three happening that year. Another live engagement for the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, on the 11th of May 1963, with the band coming back on a stage after a holiday break. Check out episode 118 of What If Up Day for more information on the holiday. The night saw them performing at the Imperial Ballroom in Nelson, with 2,000 teenagers in attendance rocking this otherwise sleeping northern industrial town. And before closing the live focus part of the episode, allow me to point you to www.simonmas.com support. Please offer me any help you feel like giving and I'll produce more music-related content for you to enjoy. Show me how fab you are while standing for the production of content you love. Thank you! 11th of May 1965 Today marked the day in which the Beatles finally completed the filming of their second feature film, Help, with their second day at the Clivendell House in Maidenhead. The production kept going for one more day, but none of the scenes filmed on the 12th of May featured the Beatles. The film had required 11 weeks of shootings, three more than the band's first feature film, A Hard Day's Night. Fun fact! During the day, the band was challenged to a relay running race through the gardens of the mansion. The race included four teams. The Beatles, plus their assistant Neil Aspinall and their chauffeur Alf Bricknell, six guys from the electrician's unit, six carpenters and six camera operators. To the surprise of pretty much everyone else, the Beatles team won the race, despite them being considered unfit. According to Beatlesbible.com, the race was filmed with an 8mm home camera by a member of the crew. After the race, John, Paul and Ringo gave an interview to Houston, Texas DJ Buddy McGregor that you can read following the link in the episode description. On the 11th of May 1967, we find the Beatles having their second-ever EMI UK recording session outside the Abbey Road Studios. Today, between 9 pm and 3 am, the band was at the Olympic Sound Studios in London, with George Martin, balance engineer Keith Grant and tape operator Eddie Kramer. The Fabs and the production team managed to start, complete and mix in mono Baby You're a Rich Man. The work began with 12 rehearsal takes, duly recorded. The last of these, featuring piano, maracas, drums and tambourine, was considered good enough to serve as take one, the basis for further work. Paul McCartney overdubbed bass on it, while John Lennon recorded his lead vocals, harmonized first by Paul alone and then by the others during the choruses. After a reduction mix, George Harrison recorded lead guitar on track three, along with the clavioline introduction played by John, the clavioline being an electronic keyboard instrument. Track 4 completed the song with more vocals, backwards piano for the final verse and vibraphone played by Eddie Kramer. At the time, Baby You're a Rich Man was considered to be the first song of a new, yet-to-be-announced project, the animated feature-length film Yellow Submarine. Ideally, the band had to record at least three new songs for the film, but this was not destined to be one of them. The song ended up being released as a B-side for the All You Need Is Love single, before it could be included on the soundtrack LP, 
even if it did feature in the film. Fun fact! The Olympic Sound Studios were frequently used by the Rolling Stones at the time, and Mick Jagger attended today's session. He might also have sung a part in the choruses near the end of the song. This was hinted by the Plasmid Jagger scribbled on one of the session's two tape boxes. One year later, in 1968, John Lennon and Paul McCartney flew from London to New York City for a four-day business trip. Their aim was to announce to the press and to friends and associates the birth of the Beatles' new business venture, Apple Core. They were followed by Magic Alex, Neil Aspinall, Mal Evans and Derek Taylor. Had he been alive, the manager of the new corporation would have been Brian Epstein, naturally. Given the circumstances, the Beatles asked their former roadie and assistant Neil Aspinall to fill the position, something he reluctantly accepted to do until they found someone else to fill the role. The band's producer, George Martin, didn't think the choice was a wise one, though, since Aspinall might have lacked the clout and the social standing to speak and deal with the executives at EMI and Capital, the two record labels of the band. Initially, Apple was meant to have five divisions – electronics, film, publishing, record and retailing. Aspinall later recalled the initial period at the company. We did not have one single piece of paper, no contracts. The lawyer, the accountants and Brian Epstein, whoever had that. The Beatles had been given copies of various contracts, maybe, I don't know. I didn't know what the contract was with EMI, or with the film people, or with the publishers, or anything at all. So it was a case of building up a filing system, find out what was going on while we were trying to continue doing something. Not the nicest or easiest way to navigate one's way around the management of a company, I suppose. And we close the episode with a bit more studio action. This one happened in 1969, with George Harrison taking part to a Jack Bruce session for the bass player's debut solo album. The event, taking place at Morgan Studios in London, saw George recording a rhythm guitar part for Never Tell Your Mother She's Out of Tune. For contractual reasons, Harrison couldn't be properly credited in the release of the album, Songs for Taylor, and so he used again the pseudonym he had used when recording Badge with Cream, L'Angelo Misterioso, Italian for the Mysterious Angel. This concludes today's episode of What a Fab Day. Tomorrow, we will be all together. Don't forget the link to the 1965 interview in the episode description. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.